This is Christopher Lobdell of Tuxbury, Massachusetts. Listen to the International Radio Report every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. Welcome, everyone, to the International Radio Report for Sunday, November the 3rd, 2024. We thank you for joining us. My name's Sheldon. I'm here with Jill. And we have 30 minutes of news and information for you from the world of radio. A busy week this week. We have a lot of stories from uh, here in Montreal, in Canada, and a number of stories from around the world. So we should get right to it. The other thing going on, and I think we mentioned it last week, is uh, the schedule changes. So you may be having difficulty finding where your favorite broadcasts are. So, Jill, you've got some tips on where people can find the in- the latest information and uh, also some information on Adventist World Radio. Yep. So um, we have uh, the uh, new schedules for the B24 schedule season. We have uh, on shortwave two uh, schedule seasons every year. So now it's for the, what they call it, the winter. I, I hate to use that because depending on where you live in the world, it's not necessarily winter. But, <laughs> yeah. um, so the new schedules, of course, mean stations have changed frequencies. Some even have shifted their time because some shortwave broadcasters shift with the time change on their own countries also. Like Radio Romania, for example, does that. If you want to look at schedules, first of all, um, the one that was the fastest to update its schedules, eibispace.de, and don't worry, we'll put the links with uh, the show. That one is pretty good. It has utility stations also in it. It's very, very nice and probably the most accurate of all the lists. But it is a list, and it's a little hard to go through for a lot of people. Uh, Something a little easier that seems to be pretty uh, up-to-date already, Uh, short-wave.info. This one is easier because this one, you can search for what you're listening to on the frequency uh, that you're uh, tuning, and it has, like, you know, a visual of where the station's from, where it's transmitting. So it's kind of easier to go through for people that have a hard time with uh, listings like EIBI that has a lot of abbreviations to learn to get used to. And if you want to uh, check out another one that is a list, but that is interesting because it's where stations register their broadcasts, hfcc.org. They now have the B24 listings up. You can look uh, at a listing by frequency, by time, also by broadcaster. It's a little difficult to manage on that one too because they have abbreviations, but they are different than EIBI space. Instead of having, for example, the name of the station with the transmitter site, they'll have the name of who owns the transmitter site. So that also is a little rough when you're not used to it, but it has great details of everything. And it's usually accurate, and they update it every day with new information coming from the shortwave broadcasters. What I like about the shortwave info site is if you're just tuning across and you land on a frequency, you put it in and you can ask it, who's broadcasting now? Yeah. So you'll see a, a list come up and with a map showing you where the transmitters are. And that's almost like a visual immediate right in front of you. And you can sort of scan down and they highlight the ones that are broadcasting at that time. So it's it's very, very easy to understand. I, I, I kind of prefer that one. But if you're looking for utilities and that sort of thing, like you said, uh, really the EIBI space is more complete for that reason. And uh, we have a little bit of news about a show called, it was called AWR WaveScan, and now it will be just simply called WaveScan. Uh, this is a show that talks about radio. It's one of those uh, DX shows, if you want. Uh, it's always very interesting. I listen to it every week. Uh, what happened is AWR, that used to have relays all around the world on shortwave, has now uh, extensively diminished their broadcasts. So now they're only from Guam. And the show, AWR WaveScan, kind of detached from the broadcaster. So it's not going to be on AWR itself anymore. It's going to continue on regular stations like WRMI, WWCR, uh, Channel 292 in Europe, uh, and a few more broadcasters. And it's a great show to listen to if you'd like uh, to hear about um, radio. They have always great re- uh, reports of history 
uh, of radio of different countries. And uh, so um, it's Jeff White and Ray Robinson that are pretty much uh, putting the show together. They have a few extras in the show, like uh, the uh, Japanese DX reports, stuff like that, that come in regularly. So great show, and it's uh, now just simply called WaveScan. And we'll put the link uh, of the uh, new site that they have where the podcasts are recorded for the show. And, of course, you can listen to it on shortwave. Um, one time that I listened to it here in the East Coast uh, in Montreal, which comes in well, is uh, uh, 0430 UTC on uh, 4840 kilohertz uh, over WWCR. Okay. There was a lot of people asking about that, thinking that the show was going to disappear forever. Yeah. But uh, so now we know uh, where you can find it. We advised you last week to start checking for pirate radio activity around Halloween. And sure enough, uh, it was extremely active, both October 30th and the 31st. Just have a quick rundown of some of these stations you may have heard yourself. If not, you can go to hfunderground.com and look at uh, details about the various stations that we're broadcasting. So it was really busy. Midnight Radio, XFM, WTF, Wolverine Radio, KRST, WDOG, Mix Radio International, Solid Rock Radio, WAPE, Ion Radio, Boat Anchor Radio, Outhouse Radio, Sicko Radio, Liquid Radio, Voice of the Abnormal, Thunder Chicken Broadcasting, Radio Comedy Club International, Jack in the Box Radio, Worldwide Basement Radio, Wild Mountain Radio, B-Side Radio, but probably the oddest one, and the first I think I've ever heard of this one uh, that showed up, was called The Voice of the National Socialist Democrats. The DJ was speaking in German, and he obviously loved heavy metal music, because that was what was being played on that station. And they were they popped in a couple times during the, 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 the Halloween period. So uh, a lot of activity, uh, some really strong signals, others kind of weak. There were some digital ones that, that were putting pictures up on your uh, software-defined radio screens on the yeah. waterfalls. Uh, I had one that was just transmitting some sort of sine wave that was visualized on the on the screen of the SDR. So a lot of creativity, a lot of uh, new stations that weren't heard before. So we hope you tuned in and caught some of them and uh, go check out uh, more details about them. One of the uh, stations I heard that made me laugh was a uh, pirate station playing spooky sounds with over it wwv time signal and every time we'd have a minute pass with the beep there'd be a voice a spooky voice saying you are now one minute closer to death <laughs> it's like okay that's that's a good one <laughs> yeah i know some of the stations you know a lot of black sabbath music and uh vincent price and alice yeah. cooper and all of the halloween usual stuff so anyways a lot of fun so uh, on local radio here, we have a little story that um, is a little controversial, but um, what is happening is that a sports guy called Jeremy Filosa has, in his, his usual reports on the 98.5 FM station, started talking about the moon landing and just mentioning that he didn't think that the U.S. ever went on the moon. So it started a very big debate in the studio with the host. So the host, Philippe Quentin, kind of was a little surprised and started telling him, well, maybe you should look at the types of sources you're reading on the internet and get real news. And it went on a little bit like that. And what we learned is the next day, of course, the uh, Jeremy Filosa was gone from 98.5. They had taken him off the air. And uh, we were wondering, will they fire him or not? Well, we finally learned that he will simply be sent to um, a kind of a course to uh, help him refresh uh, his um, journalistic integrity, if you want. <laughs> That'll be uh, several weeks. He's not going to come back on the air before next year. But uh, he will be back after he follows that course because they want him to uh, be careful, I guess, of what he says. I guess they figured he's a sports guy, talk sports. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't get into other maybe 
potentially controversial issues, but I, th I think that was a little extreme. I mean, it is a it could be a free speech issue. Uh, someone on the radio is not entitled to an opinion, according to whoever runs that station. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm not not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, definitely, it's uh, something that's a little delicate. And uh, he's lucky, in a sense, because uh, 98.5 is known to fire everyone, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyways, we thank Norma, uh, uh, our, one of our regular listeners, for passing that story along. It came to us uh, through uh, Hugo Dumas of the La Presse newspaper here in Montreal. Next, uh, we have a news story out of Winnipeg. It comes from Broadcast Dialogue, uh, written by Connie Thiessen. Patterson Media, which is one of the uh, big uh, radio station owners in Canada, drops the Now Radio format in Winnipeg. Patterson Media abandoned the Now Radio format in Winnipeg at midnight central time, introducing ALT or ALT 94.3, Winnipeg's music alternative. CHIQFM will now play the best of alternative music from the 2000s to today with a playlist featuring artists like Muse, Coldplay, The Arkells, Death Cab for Cutie, 21 Pilots, Cage the Elephant, Foster the People, and Foo Fighters. General Manager Mark Patrick told Broadcast Dialogue that, that Marika and Turnbull, the hosts of the morning show, will continue in the mornings with both local and out-of-market voices to be heard in other day parts in a non-traditional approach. You'll hear multiple voices throughout each hour of the day, said Patrick. Those voices locally are Aaron Penman and Zap Davids. And then out-of-market voices are Melissa Thomas from Vancouver, Travis Bretzer from Edmonton. We'll be adding more local and out-of-market voices to our content lineup in the new year. The now radio format was introduced to the city in October 2021, a departure from 94.3 The Drive, the classic rock format the station previously had carried since 2016. A consistent rating performer for Pattison in Edmonton, the now format has struggled to gain traction in other markets. The company made the move to return alternative rock to Vancouver's 102.7 the peak uh, CJPKFM in June after a two-year run there. Stingray also moved away from the similar Today Radio format in Toronto this summer. Patterson introduces Alt 94.3 less than a month after Chorus Entertainment's move to rebrand Power 97 CJKR in Winnipeg as Winnipeg's iconic alternative, although its playlist skews towards new wave, grunge, and classical alternative hits. Patrick said despite 90, a Power 97 shift to alternative, Alt 94.3 will stand apart. We will con be concentrating on the past 25 years of alternative music, while Power is more focused on the 90s and more of a classic alternative station. Alt 94.3 will be nothing like power and completely unique to anything the Winnipeg market has ever heard on radio. We're all about the music, all about loving Winnipeg and a true alternative radio station that focuses on what's new and great today in alternative music while still playing the biggest alternative hits from the past 25 years. Winnipeg is long overdue for a station dedicated to new alternative music, and I couldn't be prouder to bring the best in alternative to my hometown, added Program Director Dale Davies in a Patterson announcement. Gee, this almost sounds like Montreal Radio, where two stations are going to, they say it's not going to be the same stuff, but I, chances are playlists are going to be very similar. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to have two alternative choices in Winnipeg. I find it really interesting that the now format, though, is not working in other parts of Canada. Uh, our friend Mickey Delmage, it's his favorite station in Edmonton, and they are very popular, as the article said, in Edmonton. Yet, for some reason, the rest of Canada, where they've tried it out, just didn't work for them. Yeah, we have these weird fluctuations and changes that we can't really understand sometimes of why a station is popular or not in the market. And, you know, we have that here with Virgin and the, and the, um, beat. the beat. And the yeah. beat's popular, Virgin's not, and yet you would not know the difference if you tune it. 
Yeah, the now format is, according to Mickey, is this very kind of free form. You never know what you're going to hear. They'll play almost anything, and uh, they take a lot of phone calls and requests and features. So what's happening with our son? Well, our son is pretty active. There's a lot of Sunspot groups that are capable of X-Class solar flares. 3869 and 3876 are uh, the two uh, main groups right now. They actually are flaring. 3878 uh, gave a X2-class solar flare on Halloween, October 31st. Now, that activity is probably going to continue, um, so there could be more disruptions due to some of the uh, flaring. Um, one of these sunspots is actually well-positioned to send us a um, coronal mass ejection, so... Who knows, that could also um, make for geomagnetic storms and auroras. So that's going to be the conditions for the week, you know, up and down, but um, but good conditions when they are um, quiet. Sunspot number 187, solar flux 270, if you want to witness all of this. Got to turn on a radio and listen. David, for the latest news from the world of radio every Sunday morning at 10.30 on the International Radio Report on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal and online at ckut.ca. Uh, Gilles, you've got some uh, really good news about a lot of people's favorite shortwave radio station. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we were waiting for that because it's, you know, one of those stations that people love and we were a little worried about its future. So the BBC issues a statement on funding of its world service. This is by Steve Collins, Radio Today UK. The BBC has welcomed the enhanced funding for BBC World Service following today's budget. Although Chancellor Rachel Reeves uh, didn't mention it in her speech. The UK budget document says in 2025-26, the settlement provides an increase in funding to the BBC World Service, protecting existing foreign language service provision and its mission to deliver globally trusted media in support of the UK's global presence and soft power. A statement issued by the BBC this afternoon says, We warmly welcome the announcement of enhanced funding. We are pleased the government has acknowledged the strong case for investing in the World Service. As the world's most trusted broadcaster, we are in a unique position to lead the global news and information market. Today's announcement will enable us to maintain all of our existing language services, to continue fighting disinformation around the world, and also provide emergency information services to those in crisis, as we have recently done in Gaza, Sudan, and Ukraine. However, despite today's announcement, the BBC World Service is not immune to the immense pressure facing the rest of the BBC. Freezes to the BBC license fee, materially significant global inflation, and the need to make investments for tech and digital upkeep. Given this, we will need to work through the details of the funding, and we will say more in due course about any changes and savings we need to make to stay competitive in the face of those continuing pressures. We uh, know that it's important to keep a balance in information and news outlets, and it's really good to see that the BBC at least for now, is maintaining as much of its service as possible for the world service. Yeah, it is great news. And uh, as it says in the article, uh, they've done so much great work in broadcasting to uh, conflicted areas, uh, giving you opinions on uh, political developments in different parts of the world, election coverage. I think it'll be interesting to listen to BBC this coming week for the U.S. election to get a different viewpoint uh, on what's going on, how they will be observing what happens in the U.S. So uh, excellent news. Really happy to hear this. We have a couple stories next uh, dealing with AI, and we'd promised you that there were going to be more of these stories coming as AI continues to creep into the media. First, uh, we go to Poland. Polish station halts AI DJ experiment. This comes by, uh, written by T. Carter Ross in Radio World. Off radio in Krakow, presenter Jakub Kuba Zielinski, Emilia Emmy Nowak, and Alec Suls had a good week-long run, but now they are off the air. The three AI-generated presenters went on air as part of what station management described as an experiment. 
and they were greeted with a massive backlash. We assume that this project would last a maximum of three months. However, after a week, we had collected so many observations, opinions, and conclusions that we decided that its continuation was pointless, wrote Off Radio Krakow's editor-in-chief, Marcin Pulit. By the time the experiment was halted, more than 23,000 people had signed a petition calling for broadcast regulators and media ethics off officials to intervene. Pullet characterized the use of AI as presenters and station programmers as an effort to provoke discussion about the threats and opportunities of the technology. However, he stated they were surprised by the level of emotion that accompanied the experiment. Matus Demski, a former presenter on the station and originator of the petition writing on Facebook, disputed that anything was learned about AI in the experiment. The experiment was carried out irresponsibly. This is an anti-example of how to work with AI. Lack of methodology, lack of voices and names from scientific environments, which should have coordinated a similar project from the beginning, from the point of view, he wrote. The AI experiment drew additional criticism because the station had let go the station's contracted presenters, including Dembski, several weeks earlier. The station, along with Poland's other regional broadcasters, have spent most of 2024 under court-ordered liquidation as part of a struggle between broadcasters and different factions within the Polish government. Pulit ended his statement with a look towards the future of broadcasting and AI technology. AI is and will be increasingly present in our lives. In the coming years, Poland will have to develop legal standards that define the use of artificial intelligence. Our experiment showed how many issues require regulation and our radio experiences can be used during work on the act. One thing for sure is that if any radio station out there wants to do AI, we need to know about it. And second, we just seen that that experiment shows how people are not ready for AI on the radio. They prefer to have real people there. I'm surprised at that much reaction in one week. You know, that really proves that it made an impact, a dramatic yeah. impact in a very short period of time. In a, a similar story, we have Bavaria that approves all AI DAB plus a station. This is by T. Carter Ross of Radio World. The Bavarian State Center for New Media, BLM, has given Anten Deutschland its approval to launch a new station programmed and presented by artificial intelligence, Absolute Radio AI. Absolute Radio AI originally launched in July 2023 as an online streaming service as well as on a local DAB multiplex in Braunschweig, Germany, from August 2023. The broadcaster is now looking to take the channel national via DAB+. Because Anten Deutschland is based in Garching, Bavaria, the state media regulator had to give its approval to the project. Before launching nationally, approval must also be granted by the Federal Commission for Licensing and Supervision, the ZAK, which coordinates Germany's 14 state-level broadcast regulators when broadcasters operate nationally. BLM president Dr. Torsten Schmied, uh stated that the BLM scrutinized the proposed service closely to ensure it would comply with German media laws and requirements. The Media Council is breaking new ground as there has been no comparable review of all AI-powered radio stations to date, inside or outside of Germany, the decisive factors for the approval of Absolute Radio AI were transparency and labeling when using AI. In its statement on the decision, BLM noted the importance of allowing media companies to test the potential of artificial intelligence in practice. Absolute Radio AI is a pioneer here and is very aware of its human responsibility when dealing with AI. The station programming is moderated by two AI-based, so KAI and Aileen, and the station slogan, moderated by AI, makes clear primacy of artificial intelligence on the station. So that's going to be another experiment to follow and see if people are happy or not. Uh, definitely, um, you know, I mean, I'm curious. I'd, I'd be curious to hear anything like that on the radio just out of curiosity. 
But uh, we'll see. It depends on how they do it, I guess. And once again, will people listen and say, yeah, I like it? Or they'll just say, no, no, please put real humans. At least it looks like Germany is is keeping a fairly tight control on this. And, and it is an experiment. They are making sure that people are aware that it's AI that they're listening to. So I think that's really important. And I think everybody should have to do that. Yeah. So that uh, you can make your choice. You know, do you want to listen to something? And do you want to know that it's AI? I think most people probably would. Yeah, definitely. There needs to be uh, rules uh, surrounding those stations, especially as AI gets better and better, will be with radio stations that we might not even notice at all that it's AI driven rather than real humans out there. So we have upcoming ham radio contests. After last week's big worldwide contest, we now have a bunch of regional events taking place. We start with the Worked All Europe DX contest, RTTY. And that is organized by the Deutsche Amateur Radio Club, 0 Zulu, November 9th to 2359 Zulu, November the 10th, uh, 3.5, 7, 14, 21, and 28 megahertz bands. And the mode is radio teletype. The 1010 International Group has its 1010 International Fall Contest Digital, 0 01 Zulu, November 9th to 2359 Zulu, November 10th. It's the 10-meter band only in all digital modes. The Japan International DX Club has their DX phone contest, 0700 Zulu November 9th to 1300 Zulu November the 10th, 160 through 10-meter bands and no work bands, and that is a phone or SSB contest. We have the Straight Key Century Club that has the weekend sprint a 1200 Zulu, November 9th to 2359 Zulu, November 10th. The bands 160 through 10 meters, no work bands, and it's CW. The Czech Radio Club has their OKOM DX contest, CW. 1200 Zulu, November 9th to 1200 Zulu, November 10th. Bands 160 through 10 meters, no work bands. The mode is CW Morse code. So there's the CQWE for Western Electric Contest, 1900 Zulu November 9th to 0500 Zulu November 11th. The objective, to contact as many radio amateurs as possible who currently work for, did work for, or are retired from any part of the Bell system or any company that was created from the separated parts of what was once the Bell system. This, in, this includes AT&T, Bell Labs, Western Electric, local phone companies, and many other companies that are or were part of the Bell system. The bands 160 through 70 centimeters, and the modes CW, phone, and digital. That's a pretty unique event. It should be fun to tune in and yeah. uh, hear some, uh, there'll probably be some great stories, especially from the retired people about the old Bell system Definitely. Uh, out there. So check that out. So that's going to do it for us today. We thank you for tuning in. You can reach us by email, radioreport at yahoo.com. Our show is live streaming and archived at the website of CKUT, ckut.ca. Our Facebook group, International Radio Report. We welcome one new member this week, John Kedju. Welcome aboard. Our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at IRR. You can go and listen to our shows there anytime you like. Go back and listen to some of the old shows as well. And finally, our X account at IRR CKUT. We invite you to follow us there. So we hope you'll follow us to next week for the next edition of our show. It is the International Radio Report on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. Have a great week, everybody, and uh, check out the radio for the election coverage. Bye-bye, everyone.